Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is an extra edition of 58 Keys for that bit between Christmas and the New Year 2022, the, the New Year's 2023, you know what I mean. Um, it's also, well, telling you that, it's kind of an excuse as well. This is an extra, which means it's tenuous. 58 Keys is still and always will be for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads, but this time it, it's not about the devices, it's about the writing. I'm going to go off on one. I'm afraid. Currently, by the way, I am writing a couple of 58 Keys editions for 2023 about researching. About uh, So there'll be one, for example, on how you gather together, you know, just masses of detail. But then, really importantly, another one on how you use that mass of details. How you don't ever, hopefully, lose track of, you know, that really interesting fact you found and you covered. It. But the way I like to show you something like that is actually the way I like to learn it for myself, to have a really specific goal that I need this tool or that service or these techniques to accomplish. And so far, actually, I don't have a particular writing project that needs a mass of research. I mean, I have done. I expect actually what I'm going to do is kind of recreation, reconstruction, show you how I ought to have done a previous writing project. But I wanted to find something new, and this, what I want to tell you now, is where I ended up with how to find new ideas. Okay, I think obviously short answer to that is, is well, it's somewhere, isn't it, between from anywhere you like and parking your backside on the seat and just working at it till you get one. Okay, ideas are somewhere between the two. Yeah, plus, I, I don't believe I can possibly be as patronising as to tell you where to get your next writing idea from what I can possibly be a little patronizing about is make a suggestion okay which is just this look somewhere new I don't mean I obviously I, I never mean copy something you find I mean I'll never mean anything remotely like that but I do mean try looking somewhere you don't normally think about follow a rabbit hole excuse follow a rabbit hole and then think maybe less about what you found and more about why do you like what you found if you do? I have examples. I just want to enthuse at you about four things, four and a bit things, okay? These are four and a bit things I don't think I would normally have thought to look into when I'm kind of reaching for something. And actually, the four and a bit include one that's the entire reason I'm talking to you about this right now at all. It's a new book. Naturally, I'm going to leave that one till last. Sorry. Patronising and mean. Why are you watching? Speaking of watching, though, you are watching YouTube. So you've already seen, haven't you, that with anything on YouTube, once you've accidentally clicked on a video about, I don't know, football or something, you know you're going to get more football videos recommended to you to the end of time. It's horrible. But actually, I think it's also fascinating. Apparently, YouTube's own engineers no longer know how YouTube picks these recommendations. I mean, beyond the very broadest terms, because YouTube is learning all the time. It's learned from a billion people constantly. But try this. Go search for something randomly. Uh, mistype a search term. See where that takes you. Or just follow any unexpected recommendation and where it goes such as in my case the example for this year I must have watched 30 maybe possibly 40 YouTube videos across the year about people who live in vans I will never live in a van but my characters might actually I said this is a new thing but there is something that I tend to do I have tended to do I read the New York Times and BBC News I mean others as well but those specific two news sources overlapping coverage very different perspectives as well as what you're learning about the news events I think you learn a lot about the culture of a publication by what is presumed to be common knowledge on the part of the readers so BBC News for example doesn't explain Brexit much because all of us here in the UK are stuck with this totally predicted and completely self-imposed calamitous disaster calamitous disaster but the New York Times on the end always feels it needs to explain it to me no I'm kidding actually nobody can explain this but that tends to be what it is what the paper tends to feel it needs to explain since I was a teenager actually going to my local library I've been reading the New York Times and BBC News specifically to get this different 
perspective on the same thing whenever they would cover the same thing. I don't know that over the years whether it has led to any specific story or moment, but it feels like it's actually grown me as a writer. 58 Keys, it's for writers who use and write on Macs and iPhones and iPads, OK? Here is a book that's very related, and actually I only read it for work, and I'm really glad I did. Johnny Ive, The Genius Behind Apple's Greatest Products by Leander Carney. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it's about Macs and iPhones and iPads, but it's a biography of the man who was, at the time of publication in 2013, uh, chief designer, some title like that, at Apple. For whatever reason, I tend to rarely read biographies. I mean, I'm just, I'm not interested at the start of, you know, what did they do at school 20 years before they did whatever the thing is that means they warrant a biography? Just tell me that. Yeah, but this one about Johnny Ive, read it for work and finished it like it was a novel. And there's one point in it that I've taken away from it that makes me want to talk about it to you now. Ive mentions in the book, in some yeah quoted anecdote or something, how hard it is to find designers to work at Apple. I mean, plenty apply, very few get hired. And it's apparently for this one reason. Every designer comes to their Apple interview having the ability to design anything you can think of on computers. Few have actually got a lathe or a chisel or a saw and made anything with their hands. And it, you can see it makes a difference. I'm deep into technology, but I'm taking that point. Yeah, I'm recommending the book, but also just getting out there and doing something. That's what I'm really recommending, isn't it? And here it is, a fourth in this four and a bit rant, really, is the book that got me thinking I wanted to, to try talking to you about ideas for writing. How to Write a Song That Matters by Dar Williams, new book. Now, I'm a fan of Dar Williams. I wouldn't kill to write like her, but I'd, I'd consider maiming a few people if I didn't know them. I also interviewed Dar Williams about 21 years ago and I came away liking the woman immensely. So the book, the woman, everything. This is a book about songwriting and I am not a songwriter. I haven't tried writing a song. I'm not going to try writing a song. Yet I relish and cherish her book anyway. I do like things that are practical, you know, and this is plenty of practical advice. But what gets me is it's also about what makes us do what we do and what we try doing to try doing it well. So just for, I'm not spawning anything from the opening pages. Dar Williams talks in this book about how she didn't want to write a particular song of hers the way that the song seemed to want to be written. If you weren't a writer... You would be giving me and, you know, her a funny look right now, but you are. So you get it, don't you? Dar Williams offers that you need to go where the writing is leading you. And I, I actually find that startlingly inspirational. Now, I said four, four and a bit examples of looking for new ideas. The and a bit part came when actually I decided on all of the above. And 58 Keys viewer Teresa Ripley emailed me to recommend a podcast that I've not heard of before. And actually, I haven't heard yet, but it's the next thing I'm doing. The Way Out is In and an episode of that podcast about Gaia. Teresa can't know until I tell her that the, even the title, The Way Out is In, resonates with me because of the Avengers. And Gaia strikes a deep chord with me because of Edge of Darkness. We'll obviously, I've said this, we'll obviously never copy from another writer, but, OK, no one involved in that pod, well, they've never heard of me, but no one can possibly know that they put me in mind of two old BBC television dramas. They put that in my head. Uh, just as no one at the New York Times sees me picturing the characters of people who read the New York Times. Dar Williams presumably doesn't imagine that her songwriting advice would help a scriptwriter, and yet it all does. I think I'm saying only connect, aren't I? Only connect and then write on Macs and iPhones and iPads, OK? And listen to podcasts that have been recommended to you. I'll just go off and do that in a second. OK. Rant, enthused, bubbling over. That's it for this edition, 58 Keys. And in fact, all of the 2022 editions, some 56 videos. Why didn't I do 58 for 58 Keys? Anyway, thank you very much for watching and for once more just letting me enthuse away at you. Now, you take care of yourself. Write more. I'll see you soon. 
and Happy New Year too.